Rips are in Thysanoptera. They're really quite small, less than a twenty of an inch long and uh, very slender. They have fringes on their both sets of wings on adults, not on the nymphs, and they have rasping, sucking mouth parts. Here are adults. You can see the fringes on their wings. They come in various colors. Some are more brightly colored than others. This is actually a predatory thrips. And it's a nymph, so you see there's no wings, but they have a reddish-orange abdomen. So you're going to see the damage before you see the insects. They feed within buds and curled leaves, and you can see the silvery appearance of this leaf here. That is indicating that rasping, sucking mouth parts of the thrips. You'll also find black specks of feces or frass around the stippled leaf edges. This is another predatory thrips. This is predaceous six-spotted thrips. So you can see there's three spots on either forewing. So the life cycle includes the egg, two actively feeding nymphal stages, a non-feeding pre-pupil and pupil stage, and they hang out in the soil or crevices of trees, and then the adult. Greenhouse thrips, pretty common. Adults are black with pale wings, and the nymphs are yellowish. So they pupate on the lower leaf surfaces, and uh, they have several generations per year, up to eight. And in warm weather or in a greenhouse, that cycle can complete within two weeks. So this is a chrysanthemum that is not sellable. You have to be really careful about um, not selling things that have thrips. Very subtle, but it's there. Here's Western flower thrips. Here's some damage on grapes. So thrips are virus vectors. Uh, many species of thrips transmit tomato spotted wilt virus. Impatious necrotic ring spot virus are vectored only by Western flower thrips. So larval instars one and two can contract the virus from the host plant. The second larval instar and adults can spread any virus that is acquired. The adults must feed for five minutes to be able to transmit this virus. And it takes about 30 minutes for the larvae to acquire the virus. And when we get into viruses, I will talk about the different types of viruses. So they're yellow to dark brown as adults, yellow to oranges as nymphs. They attack many herbaceous ornamentals, vegetables, uh, grapes, strawberries, some shrubs and trees, and uh, some stone fruit. So here we have it on uh, a daisy type plant, and you can see it's got this scarring. It looks dirty. And then uh, this is damage on a common bean. You can see the, you might look at that and think, okay, well, that's maybe fruiting bodies, but that's the frass from the thrips. So they develop between the temperatures of 47 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The optimal conditions are 77 to 86. And Western flower thrips can go from egg to adult in 9 to 13 days. So when you're monitoring these guys, you can try beating or shaking the foliage or flowers onto a sheet of paper, a beating tray, sheet, or clipboard. And they're so tiny, that's really, it should be white so you can actually see them. You can also monitor thrips, adult thrips, with bright yellow sticky traps. If you're looking for western flower thrips, blue sticky traps work best. And here's some of these sticky traps. So minute pirate bugs and predaceous mites can help control certain thrips species. You want to control your nearby weeds. A lot of weeds carry viruses that the thrips can spread. Um, some plants may be able to outgrow the thrips damage, but you do want to avoid over fertilizing. 
So remove and dispose of old spent flowers. There may be some resistant cultivars. For example, western flower thrips damage to roses is less of a problem in the cultivars with sepals that remain tightly wrapped around the bud until they're just the blooms open. But uh, do keep in mind, they do like white flowers. So the white roses are going to be particularly inviting to them. Prune and destroy injured and infested terminals. Avoid shearing plants. Review, remove infested flowers. And I know when we did uh, interior scapes, we would always just take the whole plant out of an interior scape because it can spread like wildfire. And then if you're going to use chemicals, you want to do it five to 10 days apart, depending on the temperature. And insecticides only kill newly hatched thrips and recently emerged adults. So that's why you have to continually apply these chemical controls.